So, are you tired of all of my tin can projects yet? Sorry. Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft and experiment with recycled and repurposed materials to help you create more economically and ecologically. And today I have a really fun, quick project using tin cans that you can put together in just a couple of hours. To make this project, you need uh, some Mod Podge, some pennies, E6000 glue, some acrylic paints, some wine corks, paper towels are always handy, and then you need a paintbrush, a knife that's uh, got a nice serrated edge to it, and you're gonna want a cutting board. You also need some tin cans and a safety can opener. And the safety can opener allows you to open the cans so that you don't have any sharp edges and it leaves a little bit of a lip on the tin can lid itself. In this case, I'm using uh, the 29 uh, ounce cans. So the lid's size is a got a bigger diameter. You can decide on what size you want to use, but I think the bigger diameter is a little bit better for this project. And the great thing about this can is that sometimes you have cans that have rounded bottoms and you can't use the can openers on them, but uh, this particular can I was able to take the bottom off in the same fashion. So I'm going to be able to get two coasters out of this can instead of just one. There are probably a lot of ways you could decorate this or weight it or however you wanted to do this, but I just think that these tin can lids, once they're taken off with a safety can opener, make kind of an interesting and fun coaster shape. So you could do this next step, you could leave it off. I wanted a little extra weight added to this because it's very light. And so I just thought of the pennies. I've also done, made some with felt rings so that they would kind of catch the water. You can kind of do whatever you want to. Um, like I said, I just think that the tin can lid itself makes kind of a obvious coaster shape, I guess. So what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of E6000 glue to each one of my pennies. I'm not worried about which way they're facing or whether they're shiny or not shiny. Oops, don't do that. And then once I get glue on, on the back of each one of these pennies, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a ring around the tin can lid to add some surface interest and, like I said, to add a little bit of weight. All right, so the E6000 glue needs a full 24 hours to cure, but it just needs maybe an hour or so to set up before you can work with it and the pennies won't be moving around. So we're gonna let the glue set up and then we'll be back to add some color. So as I've already mentioned, there's probably a lot of different ways to do this. You can definitely use your creativity. I am going to paint mine and I like uh, sort of a rustic look, so I'm gonna try to make sort of a rusted finish on mine. A faux rusted finish I guess. I thought about spray painting them copper or some shiny metal color. You could certainly do a lot of different things but like I said I want to kind of make mine more rusty and rustic looking so I'm just using some black acrylic paint here. I'm going to put like one drop on just right on my project and I have a little bit of a light brown color as well. I'm going to use a little bit more of that. And then I'm going to use a combination of a paintbrush and a paper towel just to kind of dab on the color all over the top here. Mixing them a little bit, not really worrying if I'm covering up every area. So once I have it kind of dabbed around with the paper towel, I want to go back and fill in some of these little spots where it looks too much like it's gone around the pennies. And it looks like I need a little bit more paint here, so that might be too much, but I can always dab some of it off. And then I'm going to 
Just kind of go in these little nooks and crannies to fill in with a little bit of paint. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute and then I like to add a little bit of actual color to my rusted pieces as well. So I'll do that after this dries a little bit. So I'm going to put cork feet on my coasters and I've read that it's easier to cut cork if you boil the corks for about 10 minutes. So I've put some corks in hot water and they've been boiling for about 10 minutes and now I'm ready to cut them. Now I'm not an expert at this. I want to get really thin little slices here. And the one thing I have discovered is that if you just cut right through it like you're cutting a loaf of bread, it always seems to angle off one way or the other and you get a really uneven piece of cork. But if you cut a little ways in and then roll it toward you and keep doing that, it's still not perfect, but you can get a much more even piece, uh, level piece of cork if you do that. If you kind of roll the piece, whoops, that one rolled right onto the ground, let me find it. And you can see it's not perfect here, it's still got one edge taller than the other, but it's much better than if you just try to cut straight through. So I'm going to try again with my glasses on this time. Because I want a nice thin uh, sliver. You can see this cork is still crumbling so I assume, and you can hear my dogs barking because that's what they do. Um, so you can see that the cork is still crumbling so I'm sure that it helps a lot to have the corks boiled in water for 10 minutes just to add some moisture to them. So again, these aren't perfect, but in a minute I'll show you how to file them down a little bit and make them a little bit smoother. Um, but like I said, rolling them does make it a lot easier to cut a more uniform and level piece. So here's what my kind of faux rusted finish looks like once it's dried. And as I mentioned, I want to go ahead and add a little bit of color to mine. So once again, of course, it's entirely up to you what you want to do to finish these. But I'm just going to use the same technique as before with my paintbrush and a paper towel to kind of add a little bit of color. To the coasters here and just make them a little more, I don't know bright, interesting, fun. If you're enjoying today's project, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you know someone who might enjoy it, please feel free to share it with them. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next Upcycled project. Sorry, I think I forgot to mention this in the tools and supplies, but this is just a sharpening stone. And you can find them at Harbor Freight, uh, probably Home Depot. They're not very expensive. I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. So uh, you should be able to find one fairly inexpensively. And I'm just going to take my corks here. You can see that they're very rough and jaggedy. And I'm just going to knock down the edges and smooth them out some so they look a little bit nicer. It doesn't take very long to kind of knock down those rough edges and if you want to you probably can level it out a little bit if you need to take one edge down more than the other just to make it a little more level. It's a little messy you can see all the crumbs coming off the corks here but it does make them look a lot nicer. So now that I have my corks sanded down and fairly level. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of E6000 glue on each one of them. And then I'm just going to flip them over or flip my coaster over and attach the feet to the bottom.
And then I, the last step is to finish the paint and the seal everything up with some Mod Podge. I like the glossy version. I just think it adds a lot of kind of pretty finish to things, especially with this rustic look with a little bit of paint. The only thing is I want to make sure that I let this uh, E6000 glue set up for a little while. So I'm going to set these aside and let the glue set up before I add that final finishing coat of Mod Podge. I do. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.